Welcome to Astrology Today, coming to you not quite live from the beautiful Sunshine Coast with a background serenade from my pooches who are seeing deer in the next door neighbor's yard. Um, we're having a very classic Thanksgiving here in Canada. Um, you know, it's very fall-ish with lots of rain on the West Coast here. And oh, here come the noise makers going through to, you know, <laughs> beguile the, uh, uh, yes, the deer. Okay, so uh, I will be your host, Maureen Reed, and I am an astrologer. Joining me as usual, Joe Kirby, astrologer based in Victoria. There goes the dogs running through. Uh, and Jenna, an astrology enthusiast from East Vancouver. Our topic today will be the Chiron return. Um, and what's interesting about it is it is an elliptical orbit, but it gives us an opportunity to check in with um, outstanding wounds or the opportunity to be the agent of others healing. So I thought I would start with. Yeah, and the interesting part is that you can look at the returns easily because yes. it happens around 50 years old. Yes, and that and it and that's true so for all of them. Used to better, close to yeah. that. Yeah. But in between tween times you can't do that like you can't no, there's no standard not well, like with saturn where we can sort of demarcate out you know yeah. seven to eight year quarters yeah. i whatever. think we can square as early as like when you're a child like yeah, yeah. And, you know, or as late as you know first square in your 20s so exactly exactly it can be very different from each of us so, yeah okay but let's just get us in the chiron mood and um this is a, a little uh, clip that i've uh, taken from the internet by a i suspect he's a Jungian psychologist and you know so it's a short and sweet version of the myth so hmm. fated to be Overthrown by one of his children, Cronus, the godhead of the Titans, devoured them all upon their birth. In desperation, his wife Rhea hid their sixth child, Zeus, on the island of Crete. As Cronus searched the earth and sky for Zeus, he came upon the oceanid Thelra, after whom he lusted. To hide from Rhea, he took the form of a stallion and mounted Thelra, in due course. Philra, in due course, gave birth with a great deal of pain, as only women could kind of imagine, to a child named Chiron, who had the upper body of a man and the lower body of a horse. Uh, seized with shame and disgust at the sight of this monster, she abandoned him on Mount Helion in Thess Thessaly. Thessaly. Anyway. Thessaly. Yes, definitely. Fortunately, Chiron was found and reared by Apollo, who taught him the healing arts, music, and prophecy, while Apollo's twin sister, Artemis, taught him archery and hunting. Chiron excelled in every field. It is sometimes said that he invented pharmacy, medicine, and surgery. Indeed, the name Chiron means hand in Greek, or skilled with hands, um, as in related to surgery. Or chiro chiropractic. Yes, that would be another healing, one. Healing arts of the hands, like. Yep, yeah, so Reiki. Massage therapy. therapy. Massage, exactly. Chiro chiropractic actually incorporates. Yeah, word. that word, yeah, yeah. Mm. For his learning and temperament, Chiron was highly sought after as a tutor. His pu pupils included many of the greatest heroes, including Perseus, Theseus, Jason, um, Ajax, the great Pe Petroclus, and of course, Achilles. Chiron had a special bond with Achilles, having advised Peleus, his father, how to win over his mother, Thetis. During his fourth labor to capture the Ermerthian boar, Hercules visited the centaur Pholus. So Chiron was, you know, part of a, there was lots of other centaurs. He wasn't the only centaur. 
but it was probably the only one that had a god for a father that i think mm -hmm. and, and a lot of them were not were not very pleasant they were rowdy oh yeah but there were a few of them like chiron and Phobos that were yeah Anyway, so Hercules is there at uh, Center Pholus's cave when, and Pholus, I guess, did, decided to, um, you know, have a bit of a party and probably in Hercules' honor. He opened the bottle of wine, but unfortunately it had been gifted by Dionysus. The intense scoop K attracted the other centaurs and drove them into a frenzy. Yeah. Hercules <laughs> defended the cave by firing arrows, arrows dipped in the blood of the Hydra. Not a good idea. <laughs> Which he had killed on his second labor. One of the arrows struck Chiron who, although friendly with Hercules, had been caught in the melee as well. Okay, for all his knowledge and skill, Chiron was unable to heal his wound, which became unbearably painful. But being the immortal son of Kronos, oh, shit, 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 shit. I just handled a wasp. God damn, oh. it came in and darn. Sorry, folks, but I'm gonna have to deal with this so that I don't get stung. <laughs> My goodness, that was unexpected. <clears throat> Something to do with this. You know, got I am I'm standing here. It's feeling. <laughs> okay. Adding a little drama to our show. Ah, shit. Anyway, okay, so where was it? For all his knowledge and skill, <laughs> Chiron was unable to heal his wound, which became unbearably painful. But being the immortal son of Cronus, neither was he able to die. In the end, he or Hercules struck a bargain with Zeus, whereby he would exchange his immortality for the freedom of Prometheus, who had been bound for all eternity to a rock for stealing fire from the gods and delivering it to humankind. And not just bound to the rock, but having his liver eaten. Yeah, well, that was good. That's my next line, dear. <laughs> Every day, an eagle pecked out Prometheus's immortal liver only for it to grow back overnight. Mm -hmm. Yes. After Chiron's death, so he does die now, Zeus at long last freed Prometheus and fixed Chiron in the firmament as the constellation Sagittarius or the centaur. Okay, so in... Um, so, you know, I'm listening to this again, you know, it's not the first time that I have um, actually heard this story. And I myself, unfortunately, have happy Chiron, very close to the midheaven, sandwiched between the midheaven and my moon. And it struck me that, you know, the first part of that myth is almost literal for me. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, when I was born, I was supposed to be a boy and gall darn it i did not you know <clears throat> appear as directed <laughs> you know my dad apparently was incredibly pissy about it um you know so i'm like oh yeah okay okay i wasn't fostered out but i was ignored you know it was like no no this is not what we wanted we wanted a boy and oh i guess we have to put up with you and yada yada yeah. Yeah, and with my Chiron very closely conjunct the ruler of my ascendant Venus. Yeah, yes. In the third house, I was a middle child, and yes, and yeah, yeah. yeah, and and that is that is quite common, oh, yeah. you know, like the and and so we all have Chiron somewhere. Um, oh, yeah. How prominent it is will, of course, speak to. Um, you know, how much in your consciousness it comes into play. Um, the other thing is, of course, if it's angular, um, then you're likely, you know, not going to be able to shy away from it much. Um, or as in Jill's case, with um, it being connected strongly to the chart. And, but it does have this oddball orbit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, it spends three times as long in the sign of Pisces and it's going its shortest time through Libra. And that's, that's wow. similar to Pluto in, in terms in that of funny, that yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, because exactly. Uh, huge time in Taurus and very little in Scorpio. Yeah, but because it's only 50 years long and not 248 years long, yes. 
Um, the <laughs> stations and the retrogrades also come into play in a way that I had not really realized until I went into solar fire and I went, okay, I need to see, you know, what is the egg, right? You know, we sort of know the egg for Pluto. It goes, it takes forever to go through Taurus and yes. it just zips through Scorpio, which is actually quite kind of it. Yes. It's that it's not the other way around <laughs> or our species would have demised a long time ago, I suspect. Anyway, so that was my first question is where is it going slow? Where is it going fast? Um, and so I set up solar fire in it in the transit list so that it would show me for various people. And so here I'd like to I'd actually I'll show you one of what the lists look like. All right. So I think I have to go here and share and then I can pull up this so here is this is russell brand who is an example that we may or may not get to and so this is what the dynamic report is that i pulled um, and so i started with the year of his birth and i went out 50 years right so that we could see this full spectrum and so he started on the day of his birth with chiron direct um at or was it retrograde let me see i gotta get us out of the way as a deep side yeah, yeah. Right. so it was direct so shortly and this particular column tells us how old so you know he's like barely out of the gate and he has another conjunction because it's stationing and turning um and then yeah, yeah. Stationed earlier in this yeah. 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 So here it is. So within his first year to have a second and third conjunction, I'm sure speaks to the particular type of wounding that this particular person is carrying. And what is one of the central things to remember is that your particular, your own personal wound is not one that you can heal for yourself, but you can be supportive of other people who have similar wounds. At least that's how I interpret it. Well, I think you can, but it takes a very, very long time. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a journey. It's a healing journey. Yes. And um, the myth does say no, but, you know, um, it is only a myth. Um, you know, his, the only way he got out of it was to die. Right. And people often get into healing work. Yes, exactly. Especially if it's heal themselves. Yeah. As I know, because I did. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, that's you're trying to heal yourself and looking at all the different methods that can support that. So, yeah. Exactly. Well, and I've, I've been on the same kind of journey. Yeah. Um, and I, I would say that in my particular case, um, what I've been able to accomplish is to be less wounding of others. Yay. Um, and I'm very grateful for the work that I've done on myself because I do not inflict my woundedness on others in the way, in the way that I used to. And, yeah, and so and, uh, I've got slightly less karma. <laughs> well, this part of the Chiron thing, you can, it's that triad, you know, the victim healer, uh persecute kind of thing that you can be on any yes you can be on all three or only yes. sit in one space or yeah. yes exactly exactly yeah so i just have a question about chiron so i thought he couldn't die oh well, and that was kind of the point he know. wanted to die yeah because his, after, his he got wounded, after he got wounded after he got wounded he he couldn't die so he was gonna and he couldn't heal himself so he exchanged his life for Prometheus. And so many, many years. Of so. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. the only way he could was yeah. through sacrifice. Of course. A long time before that, but yeah, eventually, that's what ended up happening. He, they swapped places. Yeah. Yeah, and okay. so he became mortal, and Prometheus was released. And um, yeah, so Chiron did get to die. Woohoo! 
Um, I'll try not to say that too loudly because <laughs> I, I have contemplated that route with my own personal Chiron moments. But, um, you know, I mean, inevitably we all will get to lay down whatever um, wound that we're carrying, right? I mean, inevitably we all do. Okay, so just to show you how this is, I'm going to show a bunch of these different um, lists to give you an idea of, of the fact that you, for your own chart, you really do need to generate a list because no one's is the same. So his first square came at age 15 to 16, which kind of makes me think, that this might have been what is getting him into trouble now. And so mm -hmm. um, let's just quickly, I am going to switch what I am showing you. So let's just very quickly look at his chart um, so that we get a sense of, all right, so not that one. No. Not Taylor Swift. Yeah, no, 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 it'll, it'll happen here. Here we go, Russell. On, and just to give a little backstory, Russell Brand is now facing dozens of yeah. sexual assault and harassment charges yes. out of the blue, and he's been beloved for many years. Oh, he has. He and has it's been, been. And since the pandemic has started a YouTube channel, you know, talking about peace, love, and understanding with a hint of conspiracy theory. Um, and so, yeah, it's. But, I mean, I'm and shocked. Also, in in my experience of Russell Brand and the talks that he puts out there, he has never denied that he had a very raucous early life. Mm -hmm. And if you look at his chart, um, Moon, Mars, Jupiter, especially Jupiter and Mars together, mm -hmm. um, you know, being a wild child was definitely his thing. This is a night chart, as you can see. And so that puts the Saturn and Saturn with Venus in the seventh, something that is always going to be work for him. Well, and I'm on squaring that Venus very exactly, closely. Exactly, exactly. And, and it's also, <laughs> you know, uh, the moon is the ruler of that and the moon is with that Mars, Jupiter. So that particular square um, and in particular, the exact aspect between Jupiter and Saturn, the midpoint of that is on that south node, <laughs> which in the south node in the sixth house, this is not good. Um, and so unfortunately, um, you know, being a wild child, having sun opposite Neptune as well does not help. Um, yeah, having to come to terms with that. Um, so you think South Node in the sixth house does not go well with these other no aspects? It yeah, it's that's contradictory. Undoing. That's that's undoing what the Jupiter Saturn like. He may have been able to justify it to himself. Um, yeah, he may not have even thought of it as being a problem because the other thing that you can see if you take out the outer planets, right? Jupiter, Pluto, and Neptune. Um, he has this perfect bucket with no handle, technically, right? And so their perspective is one-sided when you start bundling planets together. Yeah. yeah. Well, and yeah, and it's cool. led by the moon. It's led by, um, you know, uh, do first, think later. And then putting Mars with Jupiter, do first, think later, to the nth degree, you know? Um, yeah, so what will be interesting to me in this, and I, so so then I thought, okay, well, what is, what's Chiron doing right now, right? Because up until now, I mean, he's owned his past, but not in the sense of being roughshod over women, right? And my suspicion is he, doesn't have the perspective innately he has to actually develop that to recognize when he's overpowering people mm. right? you know if that's an accurate time for him is that uh yeah he um he okay so when we we did an episode because he has a time mm. plan, right angela jolene was born yeah. on exactly the same day and he posted this 
chart, not necessarily, you know, in whole signs, uh, with Angela Jolie on their birthday. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just, I'm just yeah, wondering. No, I know because it's zero, zero. Yeah. Chiron exactly squares the ascendant if this is accurate. And there, yeah. And Venus. And, anyway. Okay. So I thought, what is Chiron doing right now that this, you know, is it? part of this current picture so because mm -hmm. it's very out of the blue like no, why now yeah well and um it was not a surprise to find what it was <laughs> that um oh no that is not what i wanted this is what i want what's underneath here there we go so can you see the list again mm -hmm. so let's go down to now this was his opposition this was at age 21, 22. That could have been when he finally put down his partying ways. I don't know. Um, this is his last quarter square. So at his Saturn return, which that's that more likely when he stopped. That could yeah. be. That could be. Yeah. 21, 22 is pretty young to stop. That's that true. That's true. And then he gets another square now. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And this to me, and, but okay. So this isn't Chiron squaring Chiron. This is his Chiron return here in 25, 25, yeah. 26. This is Chiron squaring, guess what? Saturn and Jupiter. Yeah. So if we go back to his chart, I could maybe switch, but I don't know if that'll work. So With all that Jupiter. Well, and, and the two are exact yeah like between jupiter and saturn um it's an exact square yeah. and so that's what it's calling out is he did not have a good set of boundaries now that doesn't mean we need to condemn him to the pits of hell forever and ever because he has an opportunity because this is part of chiron's journey for him to meet these women in a place where he can support their healing now well, whether, whether the system will allow that or whether he's got the emotional maturity to get there i don't know that i don't know yeah um, he doesn't have a lot of yin energy in his chart no i mean you look at all that aries yeah that, mm. that his is ego is so just hard. too big especially yeah. with, with mars you know not far from the moon or jupiter yeah um, you know, and even Gemini, it's, it's, you know, it's a yang sign, not yin. Yeah. So got a heck of a lot of masculine, you know, I guess you might say the toxic masculinity is a potential for somebody with that kind of energy. Because Well, exactly. Exactly. Yes, Mars, even though he spots a very different um, image. Yeah. Well, at this image. point in time, and I don't think it's an image for him. I think he has done some honest work but that doesn't negate the fact that what's central to a chart like this is a lack of perspective yeah. and the only way you step like in terms of his own self-realization yes i think he's got there but in terms of perspective this is the time well and, his and, own and when you talk to and i'm sure jill you can you can um, agree with this like i you know i've had numerous um couple readings where one or the other of them have this kind of pattern and i'm able to say to the person with this pattern you know when she see, says or he says because it can be either way um you're not getting it and mm -hmm. they'll look at you go well yeah they say that to me all the time and i go so and i let them see this as a visual because yeah. It's like you, these kind of people can get so focused in what they, you know, and they absolutely have no clue as to how to step out of their own perspective mm -hmm. well, and see it from somebody else's point of view, right? But like it's, it's they have to choose to do that. Yeah. Right? yeah. But especially with all that Aries, which is very much me oriented. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, and there's no, I wouldn't know anything about that. Yeah, <laughs> And yeah. well, and I have Aries rising too, Jenna. So, <laughs> and the square is is exact between Chiron and his descendant Venus. So, yeah, 
Does he get the feminine side of things? <sighs> That's a very good question. Yeah. And see, from a Hellenistic point of view, that Venus Saturn um, don't represent necessarily personal planets for him. They represent others. And so mm -hmm. they, these are he's he attracts very sensitive cancer people who who may or may not have good boundaries with Saturn there. Well, and he expects them to set the boundaries. Yes. And they, you know, if he he was in acting before he got into what he's doing now. Um, and so he would have been, you know, sort of this idolized, very handsome man. Yeah. Yeah. It would have been so easy for him to not get this whole perspective thing right oh, yeah. boundary thing and that does not absolve him of what's happened but i think he may have the wherewithal but whether the system gives him the chance to make amends in a way that is chiron healing for others it'll be interesting to to watch that yeah well i think he did release a statement and he was just like just denying, denying it all and saying everything was consensual um, and that he's- And okay, and from this chart's point of view, it would be easy for him to say that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, to so rationalize that. Yeah. Somebody can actually go knock, knock. Cause I know with the people that I've sat with, when I'm talking to people like him, the fact that I'm not in relationship to them Right. And I can say, you know, hello, you actually have to choose to learn how to step outside of your point of view and look back at someone else. And they're like, mm -hmm. you know, they've heard this uh, countless times from other people who they're in relationship to, but of course they just go, whatever. And I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> you actually have to learn to do this if you want a successful relationship. Hmm. Right. You know, and I have seen some of them give pause to that. Hmm. Right. You know, so it is possible, but that you need someone to, you know, whether you can come to it yourself, I'm assuming it's possible, but they do need somebody to pull them up short and go, excuse me. Yeah. Wake up. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't negate all of the other work that he's done. And, you know, we're so quick to tar and feather people into oblivion that, you know, that the healing that's possible for the victims gets lost, right? The, the mm -hmm. you know, the accountability from him to them. And, and that Jupiter Saturn exact square makes it really difficult for him to own that. Yeah, exactly. And it's on his south node, which is how things unravel. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so and Saturn, Saturn going Chiron to Pisces. Be, yeah, Chiron can be a pretty big deal in your chart, and uh, yeah. Okay, and so wait, one more um, question. So, yeah. with Saturn going through Pisces, is that instigating I, this oh, unraveling for him? Um. Well, that is the um. Okay, so I guess we would look at his Pisces. I guess I'm just trying to make a connection to Saturn. Why in particular are, are in Pisces and if it's instigating his unraveling of the 12th house. Okay. Let me pull up the chart. Cause I'm not entirely sure that I'm following your question, but I suspect it's a good one. So let me get there because. Okay. So Saturn is here in his third house. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, and it's nowhere near any of these degrees yet. What it is doing right now is mm -hmm. the south node. Which yeah. is which is the point you're talking about, is that yeah. zero? Yeah, zero. exactly. Okay. So, yes, it is yeah. contributing. You've it got is that. for sure. Oh it's amazing. Zero. Okay, zero degrees. And yeah. it's sitting at zero degrees as it gets turned around. So yeah, it's gonna be there a while. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it is activating that that yeah. south node. In the six. are entirely correct and yes. so okay. this would speak to um uh, says a little bit about the women who are bringing forward um because third house will often represent 
your immediate community. So these would have been the people that he hung with in, you know, like Jill was saying, in, in his 20s until he got to his Saturn return, which is, which I agree, Jill, that's likely when he put a stop to it because he did. He's yeah. married and he's got kids now, right? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, but I, yeah, 21, 22 is way yeah. too early. Right. Way too, way too young to get it. Like, stop that kind of behavior you're just getting really yeah you know, that's when it starts yeah yeah exactly yeah okay so, and also yeah yeah the, the sixth house the gemini piece here um you know that speaks sixth house is health and so you know his whole mental perspective yeah and is, this is this is um, a mercury in its own sign but it's debilitated because it's retrograde yeah. It's under the beam, so it is considered in his in its chariot, but the retrograde says that justifying blah, would be easy, right? Yeah. I mean, and that's just a Gemini thing, right? They can say anything yeah. and mean anything at any time in any language. <laughs> Especially when Aries is saying it, and I'm always right. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Sure. Yeah, this is um this is a tough chart. Yeah. 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 yeah, and it's you know it's as you say aside from the three uh, three slow planets, they're all bundled in a very yeah. you know it's this other side of the chart dealing with others. Yeah, right. And um, yeah, well, yeah. In, in my system, this would be yeah in the past. Yeah, it would be but yeah. This would be even more problematic because it's actually going to be yeah. okay. Let me very quickly. <laughs> um, change it up so that you can see it in Jill's system because she's right it does look very different but I'm just thinking the Aries piece then falls in the sort of my side of the chart <laughs> so yeah. makes it even more even um, more of a bucket well more there it is there it is in class yeah. so we have um, yeah. where's our interception here Aquarius yeah. which is self and other yeah 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 and that puts this in the fourth house so it's interesting because that when i went to pull up um because i wanted to see when it first got announced um to see whether the chiron fit in right and who was there with him to defend him and my son did no wrong was dad so yeah. the placidus house system of course puts dad in the fourth house with that self undoing yeah. south node which is interesting so in other words dad was probably not necessarily a straight up person in oh, no, it may be a familial pattern yeah yeah you know mm -hmm. it, I mean, we learn stuff somewhere yeah mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So. well yeah. and also this, this mars opposite pluto is pretty oh, intense yeah, yeah. <laughs> that doesn't help <laughs> not at no. all and opposite the moon as well right well exactly yeah yeah what's the relationship uh moon mars um opposite pluto yeah yeah there will be yeah. elements and backstory to this for sure yeah so dad might have been you know this is mom she may have been kind of a victim of stuff too yeah who knows yeah yeah well, anyway. at least we know she was very fiery. <laughs> Would not have just, you know, but it was not her that came out. It was him, the dad, right? So that, and, you know, again, I didn't, I didn't take a lot of time. Well, I didn't spend any time with the, with the biography, the backstory. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it was just, yeah. Yeah. And, well, also that Mars is trining Neptune, which. Well, it's not good. It's the Neptune's not opposite good, the sun. You know, so it's maybe, not going to set any boundaries for you. That's for sure. No, no. So you're seeing his mom in in Pluto. Yeah. No, in the moon. The moon is oh moon right, is which is directly opposing Pluto. Pluto. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So there was a power play involved in how he saw being nurtured and supported, and with it being mm -hmm. opposite, it can indicate that there was overpowering yeah pluto overpowering this moon um and mars trying to strike out right but when you have mars opposite pluto 
in my particular analogy, that's the big stick, but it's so easy for the stick to get handed to somebody else because it's an opposition, opposition. And then they take your power and beat you up with it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so, you know, just in terms of it possibly being a family familial pattern that yeah. may, you know, how that works in their family that dad is the one with the, with the stick. <laughs> yeah. And then of course you got Uranus is opposite the Chiron. It too is in Libra. And yeah. so again, we have this surprise of what's balance, yeah. you know, and then of course, Neptune opposite the sun and, you know, it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah so the outer planets do not help. No, no, not. Um, and they set the stage though, for him having to learn perspective. Yeah. 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 They definitely yeah. do. Eventually. Perhaps. <laughs> You will get this lesson, I say. <laughs> okay. <That's fun. laughs> so, okay. So, not I, an easy chart at all. It makes me feel I mean, grateful. <laughs> I have a lot of Aries and Gemini. <laughs> well, you look at your oppositions in a whole new way, especially if mm -hmm. they're involved with personal planets, right? Oh, yeah. It's just, um, I per se don't have a personal planet opposition, but I do have Jupiter out of. The bundle right mm -hmm. and um yeah it makes a, a bazillion in conjuncts and yeah so, yeah. yeah anyway um okay so <laughs> i didn't know i was gonna spend that long on that one um mm -hmm. okay so jill had an example i will let you pull oh, okay yeah. yeah i just i was kind of just looking through to see if i could find any interesting chiron things in my you know, my own family or whatever. And I decided to look at my mom's chart just to see what Chiron was doing when her dad died. She was six years old. So I... And you know, why would you think that would be particularly wounding? So so let's have a look at her chart and take that piece first. Okay. Yeah. Well, her... her. Um, Oh, right. Sun, Saturn. Sun, Saturn. Conjunction. conjunction in the eighth. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. yeah. yeah no. so where's where's Chi Oh, there's Ch Chiron down there in Pisces in the fifth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's, you know, it's not that it, it screams it here, but I thought, so what was happening? Where was Chiron? Right. Was Chiron, yeah. Was that contributing was to? Doing? At, yeah. At so we could say um with Chiron in the fifth ruled by Jupiter that this has something to do with hope um and um well and there were also of you know like the way the world's supposed to be in kind of fifth house the ideal story that kind well of she had a belief that life is grim life is earnest so she said that a lot and mm. this Chiron could have been what set that in motion because otherwise Jupiter is not necessarily it no see this, that Chiron. This is, but, this is pretty but that just dominated, yeah. yeah so, so yeah, I think yeah. in combination with that, Chiron in Pisces is uh, you know, yeah, there can they didn't have strong faith then. No, no, and so it's yeah, there's always something to take the joy out of life. That's fifth house Chiron. <laughs> that, these are still yeah. These There's your 28 degrees the Aries. Sorry. It is the moon. Yeah, that's uh, there it is. Jill's descendant. Yes. Yeah. Well, yep. <laughs> or me. Uh, hopefully, do I remind you of your mom? No. Good. No. What about me? <laughs> no, not at all. My, my son Aries is 28 degrees. My mom was just, I mean, she was heavy. She was. Yeah, like, she was Sun Saturn. Yeah. Yeah, she was like a lump of granite, you know, and yeah. she, oh. she had Oof. she had endurance. She endured a lot, but she she also had a belief system that, like I say, yeah, life is grim, life is earnest. There's always something to take the joy out of life. I remember because she yeah. said that all the time. Oh. Like, thanks, mom. Oh my god. Why not? So yeah, you know. I mean, okay, so is, what did you find with Chiron? So what I found was, which I thought was interesting, I just, I brought up her solar return for age six when, right. which was when your dad died. And uh, this is the solar return chart. 
And we have Chiron. <laughs> I'm on the ascendant. Oh my God. And I just thought, well, that's an interesting little thing to notice. You know? And, and it's, it's ruled by Mars in Virgo. Yeah. And it's also, it's, let me count the ways. Yeah. Let me make a detailed uh, storyline to go with this. And it's squaring Pluto in the fourth. Your dad died. Right. You know, I mean, it, I just sort of looked at it and went, wow. <laughs> she would have been so open, moon and cancer. Mm. Well, and also, her, her dad for her was kind of the more nurturing of the two. Of, her dad was her own Virgo. parents, right. Yeah. Her dad was a Virgo, or her mom was an Aries. Oh, and, yes, yes. No, the, yes. Oh, for dad was a Virgo. Oh, then that's Mars Virgo. Yeah. Okay. That well, makes- her Taurus energy felt much. Yeah. Yeah. So and for her- having Neptune conjunct Saturn. Um, we're all about to have to go through another moment of that. Jill and I were born around the time that Neptune and Saturn got together at the end of Libra. Yeah. Um, but we're about to experience uh, Neptune-Saturn conjunction in Aries in 2025. Um, and th- this is never a happy combination. Um, no. You've got, you know, the spiritual and reality are trying to. And so there's... Um, you know, the fantasy and then reality. And those two are just not a happy couple. Yeah, and, her, and Mercury was squaring all that. So yeah. confusing much. And, you know, even when she was it's in It's Leo. Her, it's the big story. It's like, no. But he, even in, you know, in her like 70s and 80s, she was saying she never got to go to her dad's funeral. Oh, you're kidding. She didn't go. Well, she was six years old. You don't yes. take children to a funeral back in 1918. You just don't. Yeah. Right. So There's an open casket. And... They kept from that because they can't possibly think anything or feel anything about it. Right? Oh, right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. We're not humans yet. Yeah. No. We're not humans. So, so, yeah, she, you yeah. know, she would say that. And I think yeah, she never got over it because she couldn't no. yeah. truly grieve it. And that's that's a sad thing. That is, so, yeah, you know, it's it's just, uh, and that's like her whole story with the ascendant. It's absolutely. just, yeah, and how yeah. she sees the world. Ooh, yeah. That's rough. Yeah, yeah. So yes, for her life was grim. Life was earnest. She lost her dad, kind of light of her life. I think at that age. At yeah, that age, yeah, exactly. Yeah, because your mm-hmm. your parents are still, you know, the the godheads in your world and well yeah so yeah but i just thought wow how did he die how did he die uh he was ill he, oh, okay. he yeah it was it was heart issues yeah um, okay. but yeah he they'd been living in edmonton um and had moved to Vic, to vancouver you know just yeah. before she turned six and and because you know they thought the change would help oh, his health right. but yeah. He just it didn't because he was too late to do anything with that. Yeah. Well, yeah, he died. So yeah. Hey. Yeah. So just uh, I just like it was just yeah, one of the, been a oh, shock to saw let's that. Just have a look at it, see what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. I guess we should mention this one because <laughs> it didn't get much more interest, more chironic than that with Chiron right on the ascendant, that solar return. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. And the moon, so I in, it, do... the moon in conjunct Uranus. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so saying you're saying that that her moon likely resembles her dad more than her yeah. mom. Her emotions. I mean. Yeah. You know, bam! This Uranian thing, like. Yeah, and we're just talking. This is specifically that year, right? Yeah. 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 Right. 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 It's a little return. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, unexpected. Yeah. Yeah. It was, there was something. And to and to be moon in Cancer in a year where something like this happens, you aren't <sighs> you're you're at maximum vulnerability with moon yeah. and mm-hmm. cancer, right? You know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah. Like normally, what was her moon? Her her moon in her natal chart is what? Aries. Aries. Yeah. So normally she's got a pretty. I wouldn't say slippery skin, but you know she. Um, action is her mode of defense right mm-hmm. uh, yeah um but yeah. not this year this year no. you know, get yeah. down and 
Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, uh, her um, sorry. Yeah, her moon is conjunct Mercury. Yeah. She could write a hell of a letter. <laughs> oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. 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 But, uh, uh, yeah, but that when a when a moon in Aries has a year where it's open like moon in cancer yeah that it well yeah because that's, that's basically squaring that right it's... yeah 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 put the two of them together good good idea yeah so you've got yeah you know and and the uh the outer wheel yeah so and it's on her mars yeah yeah yeah, it's just, yeah, and Mars Neptune is she would she would act and then be why am I getting you know sort of the reaction that I'm getting right yeah I well would, I yeah would surprise I, her. I think she probably didn't act a lot because Neptune is like yeah puts the no, there's no point yeah oh right the no point thing oh Chiron Chiron glad I never met her. <laughs> Chiron and Pisces, like uh, she, didn't, she didn't have any. Oh dear! If she it, have any, it's almost as bad as Mars and Libra. <laughs> Maybe it's worse. I think. Yeah, like she she was powerless. She never felt like she had. Yeah. Power, at all. You A know? woman in 1912 having power. And yeah, natally, natally, natally thing. And yeah. natally, she's got South Node on the ascendant. Yeah which could predispose you to that whole, you know, life is grim, life is earnest kind of mentality oh. anyway, right? Oh. So yeah, difficult chart, difficult life. She, yeah. it's hard to know whether she had a difficult life because she believed she would or, but I think, you know, being, being the time she was born and all that time and yeah, uh, and all that sort of yeah. thing. And yeah, losing her dad that early, she had, a sister that was 12 years older, a sister that was 10 years older, and a sister right. that was five years younger than her. So oh, she wow. was, oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. And so, yeah, I mean, really, I might as well have been an only child in some ways. Oh, you're totally. That, that, you know, know, that mirrors my condition where, you know, there, there isn't the contiguous style of family system and it and her, her young part like that yeah people get lost in that. and at that time when her dad died her younger sister was only like a year old so yeah so mom had her hands full trying to like how am i, feed? How am I gonna do all of this and yeah and then mom you know she grew up in a family of women it was my grandmother and uh, there was an aunt maiden aunt that lived with them and helped and and then her sisters and, you know, they all had to go to work. And yeah, mom, yeah, immediately. Mom, just, uh, mom started working at 15 or something yeah. in an office. So, yeah, you know, just, yeah, understandable how she would feel the way she did, but it didn't help me a lot. Carrie, <laughs> <laughs> You needed a slightly different model. <laughs> yeah, would have been helpful, but then that's part of the learning too. Yeah, and part part of my inheritance that Chiron Venus thing, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Your moon there. Yeah, yeah, because she wasn't about. She didn't, you know, have any opportunity or no to do any or either. even the context. Like it wouldn't have been put forward as a thing at all in that. No, she was just in survival mode all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's I, I just thought that was an interesting one to have a look at. That's a great example. Yeah. Okay, so if you stop sharing, I am going to throw up Taylor Swift's chart. Oh. Yes, because she does have an interesting Chiron. She does, she does. And I do believe I even have her list. So let's switch this one to this one. Okay, so as you can see, it's doing this huge opposition in her chart. Yep. Yeah. And so opposite Saturn. Opposite Saturn. Yeah. And Saturn Neptune. Here we've got Saturn Neptune. Exactly. And Saturn's exactly. sign, which you know would throw yeah. to Saturn a little bit, but yeah. Yeah. This She's is able to constructively use it a little bit, or I guess that's to the moon, but 
Um, well, whenever you have an opposition, um, at least with Saturn being involved in Saturn being relatively uh, functional in its own sign, um, but getting clear on exactly how to set up balance and set up good boundaries with Uranus, Mercury, Neptune, Saturn, um, I think one, other, yeah. one could analyze her music to see just how well she's getting um, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of the one song that she kind of caught me with, uh, which was the one um, where she's the, I don't know if you would call her a femme fatale in a, you know, and she destroys the guy's car and I can't even remember the name of the song now. And it was out, you know. Look, what, we, look what you made me do. Yeah, yeah. So even that statement, look what you made me do. I'm sorry, honey. That is this opposition not functioning in a healthy way. <laughs> no one makes you do anything, <laughs> right? You make that choice. Especially if you got Mars and Scorpio on the first, on the ascendant. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Oh so, yeah. Yeah, she's, uh, she's writing out of that opposition um, and whether or not she can, you know, grow into it in a way that's actually functional. I think the other oppositions there are helpful in that regard. Mercury opposite Jupiter. You get more perspective with that. that yeah, that could help, definitely. And the Uranian thing with the moon, like wake up calls. Yes, yes. But so, that moon Jupiter itself um, has... Um, has to recognize that her sensitivity isn't the only sensitivity in the room. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming in like a wrecking ball. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You hurt her. And, you know, there comes Mars, Pluto, and the Ascendant to uh, wreak vengeance, which I don't know. <laughs> well, what might be somewhat helpful is, is, is the trying from between Chiron and Pluto. Yes. Because she is able to transform herself. That is true. That is true. And so, yeah. And, yeah. and have some recognition of the, yeah. the depth of the wounding. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I think these, these oppositions offer a little bit of help, but that as well. So, yeah. yeah, this is definitely, yeah, difficult. And so it'll be interesting to watch. I mean, she's young enough that we get to watch for a while um, just how this plays out in terms of her learning how to do relationship. Wow. And so I did do, let me pull up her list because I did do her list as well. All right, so... Um... So that was Russell's. Uh, oh, we have Jenna's, but let me just open. Uh, no, that's because last week we talked about how her Venus is kind of excluded, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, doing relationship is part of definitely what she's here to to uh, play with. There it is. There we go. Okay, so here's Taylor's. Oh, I might not have. Have I done the? Oh yeah, I did. Okay, so where are we here? So this is where she's at. She's actually just come off of, um, because she just broke up with somebody, didn't she? Just recently. In March. In March. Yeah. So. Square. Yeah, the square. Yeah. It happened in September and in March. Yeah. Okay. And again, yeah. So here was when they finally split up. Yeah. 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 So it is playing into it. Um, it does it. Let's see now. Where's the opposition? Let's see now. Chiron is in Doris. So the 2033. Okay. That's further. Have I missed it? You did. Um, Aries. So wait a minute. What was her? Twenty. Um, I saw twenty thirty three. Let's go down. Okay, but I'm not seeing Chiron. Opposite, opposite Chiron opposing ascendant. 
No, no, I'm looking at Chiron actually opposing itself. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Oh, here it is. Oh, there's there's the return at 50. Where the heck is the opposition? That's the last, oh, that's the last square. So the opposition was where? Oh, okay. Not a really good list for some reason. It's missed it, which can't yeah. be true. So it would have been when Chiron was in, so her Chiron's in Cancer, right? So here it is here. So that's the opposition when she was 13. So see how early she got that. She got the opposition at age 13. Wow. Yeah, well that's- so You yeah. really do need to, what threw me is I highlighted the wrong one. Um, you really do need your own list to understand when you're going to get sort of the yeah 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 that's pieces. the tricky part with Chiron because yeah. it's not the, the easy pie chart that the other ones are yeah, yeah exactly so you can construct this list and um, you know as I was saying earlier I do have so here's Jenna this is oh your lord list. let's see what mine was <laughs> okay so we'll, we'll start at the beginning uh okay so that's you coming into the world the conjunction so the first mm -hmm. square you had a one hit wonder when you were five mm. yeah interesting yeah that's yeah that's the early end of having the, the first square yeah five. sometimes it doesn't happen until yeah. 20s for some yeah exactly Okay, then the opposition is... Oh, I, that's exactly 13. what I thought. I was like, definitely a 13. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 13, 14 is a lot of stuff often yes. happens because you yeah. come up to your Saturn opposition as well. Yeah, yeah. So it can be difficult, but throwing Chiron in, yeah. You just... On my set, when it's on my south node already. Yes, yeah. 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 And the next square is here. Just oh, great. Up shortly. <laughs> In May. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Inquiring minds wanted to know. May, May, October, and March in 2025. I mean, yeah. Guys, I've had it enough. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, so Oh, so, I mean, right. it's, we all have them. We all get them. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But I do, you know, in terms of, so for both of us, for um, obviously Jill and I, we've, we've had our return. And I know for myself that um, it happened at a time when I was not able to stand up for myself um, as an adult. Um, and it was a very, very difficult return for me. Yeah, I just started uh, learning body talk. Oh, okay. Oh, well, at least you were learning something that could help with that. <laughs> well, exactly. What was I doing? I've done a lot of other, you know. Yeah. Things. You did what? Body? Body talk. It's the body talk modality that I use mostly yeah yeah so it's it's energy energy work yeah so I yeah I, was, I just started learning that in 20 uh, 2001 I guess yeah so this was 2002 was my return yeah whereas at um, age 50 what did I do I became a truck driver yeah I had just barely got a bookkeeping business off the ground and I dropped it. And that was, yeah. it was not a good year for me. Not yeah. a good. And um, in my worldview, um, it's choices. And mm -hmm. I was unable to not make that choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't have the strength of, of character in me to draw that line which is this is on a cardinal axis right chiron's in capricorn taking responsibility yeah 
Yeah. 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 So, yep. You know, um, and life is full of those kinds of choices. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, it was certainly a good decision for me. I learned a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And it would have supported what Chiron needs people to yeah and i mean it is to I think be I always, a healer of the kind of wounds that you carry well yeah. and even when i started doing astrology at uh, you know 21 um 22 um when i started learning it I, I i always saw it as a healing tool you know yeah well and i i went Most looking for a, why did the guy not read my chart? Does this mean I'm going to die? <laughs> but then after that, um, by the time I got real serious about it, which wasn't until I was in my 30s, it was, I'm really fucked up. And <laughs> can this help? <laughs> it yeah. Help me to understand. Yeah. I didn't see it so much as pointing you know in being a healing tool in and of itself but i i needed better understanding and unfortunately well, the the modern system was not able to do that for me it wasn't yeah. until i you know until the hellenistic perspective i placed that on my chart but that's not going to be true for everybody right no yeah. no i mean i think for me it was just yeah it always yeah. helped because you know that's the whole thing is you've got to know thyself kind of thing yes. that yes. is part of your healing journey and if you don't get that then and so that for me is and it gives people perspective on themselves yes. that's yeah you know, it does that is and huge. That, yeah and so for me it was you know I, I saw that right away and I was yeah I did some other work I actually took a course or a I guess it was sort of a course yeah we were learning how to do some psychological kind of work with people but it was more like a therapy group because we, you know, we yeah. we we learn the techniques and we practice on each other, and it was an interesting time. That was mm -hmm. in the nineteen ninety, I guess. Yeah. Um, and and interesting. In, I was doing something in, similar. Yeah. Yeah, and in the process, mm -hmm. it was really interesting because you know all these other people would have things like, oh, we had an alcoholic parent or a abusive you know, situation or a sexual, you know, whatever, you know, and I'm like, geez, I didn't have any of that. How come I'm so screwed up? <laughs> but, and it was, you know, for me, it was helpful to have the chart to look at and realize, well, it, you know, with my sensitivity to the environment, it was enough to have this, yeah. mm -hmm. this, this sort of yeah unhappy parents that were, you know, they didn't fight. They didn't yell at each other you know it, it but it was not simply, create an environment that and, and with my yeah. mars in scorpio in my first house i was like the um i was like the safety valve because mm -hmm. nobody else expressed anything and i would get frustrated not with people not with it i'd be trying to do something and i get get frustrated and i just explode right yeah and then i you know i get isolated sent to my room because that's what my mother found was the cure I, I go away until you can be nice <laughs> so <laughs> I learned that you know to stop it all but I think that's that was kind of my role there in that explosive yeah. with god there's so much anger around here and nobody's acknowledging it and I you know I'm not trying to do anything but boo yeah you know, it needs release somewhere I guess yeah I no exactly. exactly and I didn't feel I had... as a child but I certainly in perspective you know in retrospect I and I went, hmm, I think that's maybe part of what was going on there. Yeah. I think I had something kind of similar with my Chiron on the South Node in Cancer in the yeah. 11th house. Yeah. And that my parents were fighting a lot and I was the mediator. I was the one that they would just come to and talk to. Oh. It was, you know, inappropriate. Yeah. You know, made me grow up pretty quickly and that oh, I needed to take on a lot of responsibility my mom and then I would just take it and feel like, kind of like you, you would get angry. I would just feel dr utterly drained, just like oh, yeah. emotionally. Yeah. yeah. Just like my, kind of like my soul was just taken yeah. from me. Yeah. Yeah. And so now if I find myself in those situations where people want to talk to me, if I haven't like taken, you know, haven't taken care of myself, I just feel like just emptied. Yeah. Yeah. So I keep, I've learned that 
over and over and over again. And for me too, the, my ascendant is the midpoint of my Mars and Neptune. Neptune in the 12th and Mars in the 1st, right? So the ascendant is the midpoint for that. So it's like you're sensitive to the environment like crazy. Yes. Right to the and other. To the extremes, right? Like in and like, the Mars energy does lots of people don't tune in or or are naturally attuned to the really intense level. Yeah, yeah. No. Whereas so under the surface, there's this yeah. Mars picking up on all the anger that's not being expressed by anybody. And you know, I'm trying to be nice and trying to be a good girl all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For the most part, it was, you know, Chiron, Venus, conjunct. Um, yeah, I know. Yeah, that was the whole message, right? You have to be nice, pleasant. Yeah, that's your job. And, if, and Libra, why is your job killing you? And Libra rising is like, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to do that anger thing. It's on the other end of the beam. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Yeah, so like I say, it gives you a perspective on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, understand it, your take on, on, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that I found <laughs> helpful and kind of somewhat healing to get that, start getting that kind of perspective yeah. along with the other work I was doing. For sure. Yeah. I think the best metaphor I heard was that when your heart is bleeding for someone or the world, it's like going out on a really hot, sunny day, naked hoping that everybody else doesn't get sunburned if you just get more sunburned oh, and so I think about that when I am just like oh I'm just like feeling and thinking about somebody and just bleeding heart for no reason yeah ah. wow yeah, yes it's an interesting little uh little planetoid whatever it gets called um, yes. Yeah. yeah. The one piece we haven't mentioned, which would give people another way of approaching their Chiron, is to recognize that it is a bridge. Yeah, uh, yeah. In in its orbit, in the eccentricity of its orbit, it goes out beyond Uranus, but it also comes in to the inside of the orbit of Saturn. I don't think it actually crosses Saturn crosses Uranus and I not I don't think it or it's the other way around. It only crosses one of them, I think. But yeah, it almost it almost goes to the other one. It yeah. doesn't cross it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But and so it was first when we first heard about it at conferences and stuff, it was called a bridge. Mm -hmm. And you know, from you know what what comes at us from the outer planets and what is more to our own personal experience of Saturn and on in and the fact that Chiron acts as a bridge between the two. Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, and, and that's where the boundaries come in. Mm -hmm. You know, we do need to set boundaries for ourselves. And that's yes. Often yeah. something that's difficult when you have wounds. Yeah. In the particular area, you know, where it is in your chart, what it's connected to. How yeah, my is the ruler in, you know, there's a whole little storyline that yeah. would serve a person to actually walk through to get a full picture. Yeah, because like in my case, the ruler of Chiron's sign is Saturn mm -hmm. in, in my 12th in mutual reception with Venus. So it pulls in both of them in there, you know, yeah. grand cross. So, yeah. It's, mm -hmm. um, and in my particular case, <laughs> ruler of Chiron, um, I mean, he can handle being in Scorpio, um, and, but he sextiles, right? Like I've got four planets in Scorpio that are sextiling that Chiron by sign. Yeah. And, um, you know, so my ability to go down the, you know, the road that I have experienced and with Chiron being on the 10th, I speak about it openly, which mm -hmm. kind of, it's not so much shocking as it was, trust me, when I first started doing that way back 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it's, it did support it. And it also kept me pushing for somebody to explain what the hell was going on. But I didn't get to that until 
um, 2015. Yeah, yeah. You know, I started working on this when I was like 20. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's a journey. I had that drive, that sex style gave the drive. Yeah. Well, and of course, the other issue of boundaries for me is Neptune's very close to my ascendant. <laughs> <laughs> well, my I, descendant. I, I relate to people who don't have boundaries. <laughs> well, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Same. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, that sort of, especially with the ruler being Saturn, it's like, yeah. you're supposed to learn this, but what's a boundary? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, all the pieces you got to look at. As with any planet, you want to yeah. look at, yeah. you know, mm -hmm friendships and other in things that are involved yeah, yeah. i um, like that there's a bridge i hadn't really thought about chiron having yeah there's a book a bridge barbara Clow called yeah, her first book on chiron the rainbow, rainbow bridge. Yeah. Yeah. the rainbow bridge yes but she has come out since with another book because she spent she spent a lot of years just totally focused on chiron yeah and, and melanie reinhardt's yeah a couple on it as well that's the one i'm thinking of i think yeah, no. Yeah. yeah, hers was uh, not the Rainbow Bridge. Hers was yeah. that's yeah. right. There was the two of them. Yeah, because it it being discovered in what 1977, of course, and and so when we hit astrology, it had only been around for like yeah, and, and those years. those books so came they out were very, yeah, like so everybody was still trying to like hunt and pack. Yeah, but they started happened. writing and and you know the information about it came out very early. Yeah. And apparently the guy who discovered it named it. And that's very rare too, because yeah. usually it, it has to go through the whole, you know, process of the, you know, whatever, whoever, you know, astronomical. Yeah. Astronomical society uh, they get together, they vote on it. That didn't yeah. happen. He yeah. said that full cover. So, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a bit of a maverick. Yes. That was another. Who is this guy? Used. Yeah. Interesting. Who is this guy? What guy? You're saying who is this guy? What? Who, who is? It? Who made it? Who discovered it? Oh, oh, I, oh okay. I, I, I yeah. can't remember. Google. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure you can look it up. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. No, it it's, would uh, be interesting to to be the person who discovers another body that's. Well, and then, yeah. you know, I mean, after Chiron, it was just shortly after Chiron that we started to get almost yearly new asteroids started to come out. Well, and, and also Chiron has had so many designations, you know. Yes. Yeah. And I think it is now a planetoid. Thought it was a comet. They thought it was a planet. I thought a planetoid, you know, you yeah. know, I mean, asteroid. And it's basically, yeah. and I don't think it's, I think it's got all those kind of categories as well still. So, yeah. He's, yeah. he's kind of, a, like I say, he's sort of a maverick, doesn't fit in kind of thing, which yeah. is part of the wounding thing, right? He was abandoned. Mm -hmm. The isolation. Yeah. yeah. Abandonment. The Finding wisdom through, through isolation. Wanted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, you know, part of the theme as well, that sense of abandonment. And mm -hmm. Definitely. So, yes, interesting oh. little body. Now you got me thinking about my chiron opposition in May. Yeah, well, like. well, it happens, Janice. So just be with it, and you know. It's, yeah, yeah. It doesn't. The planet life, don't life is unfolding apparently as it should. Yeah, and the planets don't make things happen. They describe what's happening. So whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So go through it. Learn what you can. Yes. Well. <laughs> yeah. Part of your healing journey. So. Yeah. Okay. It's on my south node. I've done enough. Done enough. Oh, good luck with that, honey. <laughs> Tell me that when you're my age. <laughs> yeah. well, I believe you almost. <laughs> and then I'll be I'll be as wise as you guys. So I guess it's worth it. We're still going through, it, so you know it's it's a process. It's not an event. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's not an arriving. It's a journey. But yeah, life is a all those takes you know, which have been around 50 statements for they've been saying the same ones for many, 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 many thousands of years. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't seem to have changed. Darn. 
but there are those who will try to tell you that they can make it change. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Good luck with that. Okay. So on that unhappy, no, well, <laughs> we are woundings. There are woundings all the time, which absolutely our heart <laughs> goes out to those in the world right now who are the byproducts of other people's wounding. Yeah. And as you said, part of our learning is to limit our that effect on others, you know, that yeah. we might yeah. that you take your wounding and to turn be mindful it into a wound to someone else. Yeah. That, so that we're not inflicting as yeah. well as you know. Yeah, because that's not helping anybody. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, okay, so we have um, we have an episode to come up with. I don't know if either you two have any ideas. Well, we'll talk about it and get back to each other. Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> I, I have a couple ideas. ideas. Oh, good, good, good. Okay. All right. In the meantime, folks, thanks for listening to us. And at the end of this is a little bit of a credit line, which gives you information about how to connect to one of us or both of us. Um, we haven't gotten Jen up there yet, but mm -hmm. maybe in the offing. Anyway, uh, take yeah, care. Welcome any comments. And Yes, or questions and or suggestions for yeah, topics. Absolutely, yeah. Yes, yeah. I do check the comments every day. So if you make a comment to this video or any of the others, it does immediately come up pop, at the top of my email list and I will respond. Yes. All right, take care and have a wonderful Thanksgiving Canadian style. Yes. Bye. Bye.